Released in 1994, the original PlayStation 1 or PS1 was a true game changer. It brought 3D graphics into the mainstream, introduced iconic franchises like Final Fantasy, Metal Gear Solid, and Crash Bandicoot, and sold over 100 million units worldwide. But like many consoles of its era, the PS1 came with strict region locking and copy protection, preventing you from playing imported games or backups. That's where mods like the PS Knee come in. And today, I'll show you how it works using an Arduino Nano in my SPCH7501 model. The SPCH7501 is part of the later PU22 motherboard series, known for being one of the most reliable PS1 revisions. It's a popular choice for modding because its timing is stable and it works perfectly with modern open source mod chips like the PS Knee. So with a solid console to work with, let's take a look at how the PS Knee mod chip works with the Arduino Nano to bypass the PS1 copy protection and make the system completely region free. When you insert a disc, the PlayStation CD controller starts checking it for a Sony special security signal called the Wobble Groove. The Arduino Nano running PS Knee is always listening to the controller's data lines. As soon as it detects the authentication process, it jumps into action and injects the correct region code signal. This tricks the PlayStation into thinking your backup or import disk is a real factory press Sony disk. Once the check passes, the system continues booting just like normal and your game loads without any swap tricks or extra steps. So with all that explanation aside, let's take a look at how to flash the Arduino Nano with the PS Knee mod. First, you want to make sure you have the latest Arduino IDE installed. As of the recording of this video, the latest version I'm using is 2.3.6. Keep this in mind, since there will always be a newer version depending on when you watch this video. Next, open your preferred browser and go to the PSNE GitHub page. I will provide a link in the description below of the video. Once you're there, click on the code button and download the master zip file. Extract the zip file and open the PSNE master folder. Then open the PSNE folder that contains the current version. Make sure you have your Arduino plugged in to your USB port. Once you're in the current version of the PSNE, which of the time of recording this video is 8.6, open the INO file. With the IDE open, first, you want to make sure that you have the correct Arduino board selected. Click on the arrow or the drop down box to select the cor correct Arduino if it's not currently selected. From the list of boards, select your board or in this case, the Arduino Nano and make sure you have the correct COM port selected. If you're not sure which COM port to select, you can verify it by opening the device menu in the Windows in Windows and under the ports COM and LPT tab, see which port is assigned. Once you have the correct board and COM port selected, now we need to uncomment some lines of code. First, we are going to define which version of our PlayStation we're going to mod by removing the forward slashes to your PS version. In my case, I will remove the forward slashes for version SPCH XX1 since I'm using SPCH7501. Next, we need to select our ship by removing the forward slashes of the ship you are using. In my case, ATmega368 underscore 168, which is the Nano. Once you have done all that, just hit the upload and wait for your confirmation that the upload was successful. 
With the Arduino Nano flash and ready, we can now begin the disassembling of the PlayStation. Disassembling the PlayStation is real easy. All you have to do is follow the arrows and remove all the screws. Once you have the cover removed, remove the CD-ROM drive and unplug all the connectors from the motherboard. Be careful with the power supply, as you could get shocked, especially if you have just had a connector recently. With everything unplugged from the motherboard, go ahead and remove all the screws to remove the top shield. Finally, remove all the screws to get the motherboard from the bottom cover. Now that the motherboard is removed, let's take a look at where are all the soldering points that we are going to solder the wires on. This mod is easy to do, and you will need basic soldering skills and tools. This version of the motherboard has a metal shield on the top of the, of the board, but I had done a previous recap work and kept it off. I took a picture of the board and marked all the points. These points represent all the soldering points for each wire. We are going to start with five volts and ground wires. I will be using red and black wires where red represents the 5 volts and black the ground wire. Next, we will solder the SUBQ point with a white wire and the SOCK point with a blue wire. Then we will solder the data point with a yellow wire and finally the gate point with a green wire. Now let's solder each wire to the Arduino Nano. 
the black wire to the ground on the Nano. The red wire or 5 volt will be soldered to the 5 volt on the Nano. The green wire to pin 9 on the Nano. The yellow wire to pin 8. The white wire to pin 7. And finally, the blue wire to pin 6. With the soldering done, let's assemble the PlayStation to run a test. Before we start to assemble the PlayStation, I went ahead and 3D printed an Arduino mount that will be added to next to the second controller port. This mount was done by Mad Mod Labs and can be found on the printables website. I will provide the link below in the description of the video. Assembling the PlayStation is very simple. Just reverse the disassembly process and put everything back where it belongs. The only difference will be when we add the mount next to the second controller port. Now that our PlayStation is assembled, let's run some tests and make sure that the mod works as intended. First, I will test to make sure that any original PlayStation game still works. I will test Metal Gear Solid since it's an original disc and worked fine before the mod was done. Now that we have tested an original PlayStation game, 
Let's try burn CDR and see if the mod works. I went ahead and burned the European version of Crash Bandicoot. Let's see if everything works as intended. Awesome, with both games working, I want to talk about the CDRs that I'm using. The reason I want to talk about the, these CDRs is because with these, you don't have to put the PlayStation in a vertical position. They're pretty cool and resemble vinyl records. And if you flip them over, you will notice that the die resembles that of the original PlayStation disc. As of the recording of this video, the CDRs are available on Amazon, so the link will be in the description below. And with that, the PS Neat Modship running on an Arduino Nano unlocks the PlayStation 1, making it region free and able to play backups with ease. Special shout out to Josh N who worked on Electronics Boutique in the Rockingham Mall in New Hampshire around 2002 when I purchased this model. Your service to this PS1 was awesome since it's 2025 and this model is still going strong. Thank you, sir. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more retro tech projects, console mods, and repair guides. And if you want to see more PlayStation content, upgrades, and mods, more videos are coming soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.